welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 280th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of daily and weekly rituals and routines that you love. And I'm going to share 12 ideas on how to incorporate them now, especially in the times that we find ourselves, which are certainly unprecedented, but also an opportunity to improve our everyday lives and hopefully, most importantly, provide some calm and comfort during this time where we're staying at home far more than we usually do. But before I get into this list, this week's Petit Plaisir is one I think you will love and appreciate, especially if you're spending more time at home, as I just mentioned, but in any time at all. I know I've been enjoying this particular Petit Plaisir and look forward to um, investing in it even more in the years to come. So we'll get to that particular Petit Plaisir at the end of today's episode. I'd like to begin by sharing a quote that I recently heard that just spoke to me. And more importantly, it resonated with me probably most uh, more strongly because of, of the situation that the world finds itself in at this particular moment in time. And it came from, of all places, yes, a television show. But let me just say, the writing on this show is just fantastic. Um, and it has been for 16 years. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Grey's Anatomy. So in the most recent episode, there was a quote at the end of the episode about gravity. Here it is. You would think weightlessness is a good thing, but it's not because people weren't meant to float. Without gravity, we lose blood volume, bone density, muscle. Without it, we're untethered. So when you feel yourself being pulled towards something, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It may keep you centered. It may keep you safe. Now, there are a lot of contexts and comparisons we might make in our own lives based on the circumstances we find ourselves in. But at this particular point in time, Most of us have a lot of thoughts going through our mind, all sorts of thoughts. With an abundance of time on our hands as we stay home, if we have not exercised our brains in this way with regards to having so many thoughts and making sure we manage them in a healthy way, it may feel uncomfortable having so many thoughts running around. And in these times that we find ourselves collectively, it's understandably unsettling. So I've shared this quote because it caught my attention, as I mentioned, as it feels our attentions are being pulled toward the necessities of life, what we sincerely need to simply live. Don't get me wrong, the past 11 years economically have been much needed and appreciated in our world. And while each of our journeys is unique, perhaps we've forgotten what we truly need, what others truly need to live well. At the moment, we are all being pulled to our homes, to our sanctuaries, to our immediate families with whom we reside with, but perhaps never see often because of our busy schedules. Admittedly, some of our loved ones may be far away due to age, relationships, work, etc., but we at least have the phone, video chat, and other technological ways of communicating. Becoming grounded in what roots us, letting gravity pull us to that place, is what reminds us of what truly is a priority in our lives. It helps us to make better decisions, to remain true to those values when the choices are vast. And sometimes when the choices are so vast and so ubiquitous for such a long time, we would only be human to lose sight of our roots. I am not suggesting that we need to have a pandemic to root us, but that is where we find ourselves. So I am determined to see some good in this perilous situation. There will be good that will come out of it when we come out of it on the other side. But as well, there is good we can partake in during this time of staying home. And that is what I want to focus on today. Today, while I had originally planned a different topic for this episode, I have decided to focus on something that will hopefully be helpful to direct our attention to, to elevate the time we have indoors, wanted or unwanted, the gift and mood lifting power of daily and weekly rituals. 
Under this umbrella of daily and weekly rituals lies our daily and weekly routines and consciously creating routines in which we know boost the quality of our lives from our health to our rest and rejuvenation to our productivity are ways to rest more easily, which benefits our mind and well-being and decreases our stress. Each of these efforts strengthens our immune system and ultimately strengthens our overall health, both physically and mentally. So today I would like to share with you rituals that you can incorporate into your daily and weekly routines while you stay at home. Number one, wake up well. Design a morning routine in which regardless of whether you are heading out the door when our routines get back to normal or staying home, you want to get out of bed and partake in. In episode 243, I shared 12 ways to make your mornings magical, mindful, and the foundation of a great day. So I encourage you to check out that episode as we go into great detail of all sorts of ways to make your first moments in the morning wonderful and something you look forward to. So that's number one, wake up well. Number two, create a daily routine you love. As I shared with my students, what would be expected of them while we stepped into our extended break just for many of you that have been asking on Instagram and those of you that just may be curious, here in Oregon, as many states have done, we are shutting down schools for the entire month of March. Now, we are expected to go back on April 1st, but who knows? That may or may, or may not happen. And I know other states have done different things, but that's where we are right now. And so as I was talking to the students and letting them know what their expectations would be on with regards to online learning, one student immediately decided that she would find a favorite place that she enjoyed being, give herself this window during her day to complete her schoolwork, and then she would be done. I was so tickled to hear such thoughtful and conscientious attention to both her academics, but also, and most importantly, her well-being by simply compartmentalizing and stepping away from work so that she could relax and just be. All of us, whether at home and especially now that we are at home, would benefit from creating a schedule in our day for productivity, but also for sitting down and enjoying meals, resting, and exercising. Knowing we have accomplished something will let us rest more easily and make it easier to sleep at night. As well, we will be giving our bodies and mind a healthy balance to remain strong. So that's number two, create a daily routine you love and enjoy the process of sitting down and thinking about what will my routine be since I'm going to be at home. You might find that you like it and you might see that, hey, I'm going to incorporate some of these things into my daily life, whether I have to stay at home in the future or not, because they really added something positive and beneficial to my life. Number three, take an afternoon brain break. Whether you enjoy an afternoon tea or an afternoon nap or an afternoon outside exercising routine, create a ritual that will be something you look forward to as you make your way through your day. If you're like me and live alone, this may be a good time to call loved ones to check in. If you live with others, it may be a great time to be together if you are busy doing your own thing throughout the day. Either way, make a point of intentionally not doing work, but rather something relaxing and enjoyable, something that elevates the everyday even more so that each day you look forward to such moments. So that's number three, an afternoon brain break. Number four, welcome the flowers. I shared on Instagram yesterday, and I've shared the picture on today's show notes, how one of the items on my grocery list this weekend, I went early and wore gloves as well as washed my hands before and after, was to welcome a few bouquets of flowers into my home. Recent research has shared, and I know I've shared this on the this and that, our weekly this and that on the blog, that fresh flowers can, quote, lower blood pressure and heart rate, lower ratings of pain, anxiety, and fatigue, and create more positive feelings and higher satisfaction about one's home. So while we need to stay home as much as possible, if possible, keeping your sanitation requirements in mind, welcome some flowers into your home and perhaps bring a bouquet for your neighbor and leave them on their doorstep with a note. You may help their health more than you realize as well as your own. So that's number four. Welcome the flowers. Number five, what to listen to. Well, why not listen to something that brings you joy? 
create a listening ritual that carries you through your day. From the classical music I wake up to on WRTI with host Greg Whiteside and Breakfast with Bach at 5 a.m., to the jazz in the evenings that I play from my Spotify playlist, as well as podcasts about food and France enjoyed while I walk the dogs along the river, around the neighborhood, or through the trees. What we turn on melodically has a tremendously powerful effect over our well-being. Choose what you love and let it elevate your days. Now, I'm going to share with you what I listen to music-wise, music as well as some of the podcasts that I am at the moment really loving, just to give you some ideas of maybe things that you would be interested in. But again, everyone's going to be different. This is just what I enjoy, and hopefully this will inspire you to create your own music or podcast or whatever it is you listen to to cultivate a listening ritual that you love. So the music stations that I listen to, I usually have them on my apps, so on my iPad or my phone. And I do, I wake up every morning to WRTI, which is in, which is in Philadelphia, um, Pennsylvania. And I've linked to all of these on the show notes, by the way. They play um, classical music, but they also have a jazz station, which I really enjoy in the evenings. And then I also listen to KUSC, which is entirely a classical station. Neither of the classical stations that I mentioned he, mentioning here have ads. In fact, these are public broadcasts that are supported by the listeners, um, of which I do support. Um, but they're just wonderful. Um, and they do calm me down. And um, anyway, I highly recommend them both. And both of them I learned because of listeners or, and readers um, like yourselves. They brought them to my attention. And I cannot thank them enough. I also have a bunch of playlists on Spotify that I listen to. I have an Escape to France um, playlist, a luxurious classical music uh, playlist that has more than 10 hours of music, an everyday jazz playlist, and a French cafe jazz um, playlist that has no lyrics and is entirely lyric free and just wonderful and a wonderful escape to France. And I also have a jazzy dinner playlist that um, I found on Spotify that I really enjoy listening to when I'm not listening to the radio that plays jazz. So those are my musical go-tos. My podcast go-tos as of late have been the land of desire, which is all about French history and culture as well as some foodie, um, some foodie podcasts that have been mainstays for me. Milk Street, Ra- Milk Street Radio, Inside Julia's Kitchen, that's Julia Child's Kitchen, and The Splendid Table. So those are all ones that I really enjoy, that relax me, and um, just uplift or elevate my day. So number five is listen to what brings you joy. Number six is create fitness habits that energize. The key to sustainable exercise routines is to keep them seemingly small, yet consistent and intentional. And because they're small, they're small to you because they're not too daunting. And so you don't mind stepping into them. You actually enjoy them most likely. Um, As I shared in the first episode of this year, 2020, in episode 272, titled Eight Ways Tiny Habits Will Welcome the Great Changes You Seek, Tiny habits do have a powerful way of instituting the change we desire because they are more likely to stick and truly become habituated into our daily routine. From waking up and doing one set of sit-ups, by the end of the week, you will have done five sets, to meditating for one minute each morning, to sipping a glass of water upon waking up in the morning. When you choose thoughtfully the habits you want in your life, Reduce them down to seemingly something so small that there is no reason not to do the task. And before you know it, as you see the positive change from that consistent effort, you won't want to reduce your effort and may even want to increase it. So as we find ourselves with more time at home and being unlikely to attend our favorite fitness class or gym, find exercise habits at home that will fulfill the exercise routine you need, but in a way that you enjoy. I am shifting my weekly yoga classes from the studio that I usually go to to a YouTube yoga instructor for the time being. I cannot wait to go back to the studio, but now is not the time to do that. I will eventually do that. And my walks that I am taking, because I am still taking my daily walks with the dogs, I am making sure to go places where I can keep my social distance at a healthy length from others for their sake as well as mine. Um, so that's number six, uh, fitness habits that energize and are things that you look forward to. This will be good for so many different health reasons, but also just elevate your day because you'll feel better and you'll sleep better at the end of the day too. Now I have six more daily and weekly ritual ideas, um, to talk about, but I'd first like to introduce you to the sponsors for today's episode. (music) 
Handy is a leading platform for connecting individuals looking for household services with top quality independent service professionals. From home cleaning to handyman services, Handy instantly matches thousands of customers every week with top rated professionals. With a seamless 60 second booking process, secure payment, and backed by the Handy Happiness Guarantee, Handy is the easiest, most convenient way to book home services. Choose a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly cleaning plan. Handy schedules your reoccurring bookings to make things easy. You can always reschedule if things change. And all pros paid and booked on Handy are background checked and rated by customers to ensure quality. You can learn more about Handy's background checks at handy.com slash trust dash and dash safety. If you're thrilled with your pro, you can book them again. As well, and most importantly, what you see is what you pay. Pay securely on the app. No need to worry about cash or checks. You can even tip your pro directly on the app. And no need to worry. 100% of tips go directly to the pros. For simple, sophisticated listeners, Handy has a special limited time offer. Get your first three-hour cleaning for only $29 when you sign up for a cleaning plan. Go to handy.com slash sophisticate and enter promo code sophisticate. That's a three-hour home cleaning cleaning for $29 with a cleaning plan at handy.com slash sophisticate using promo code sophisticate terms and conditions apply visit handy's website for more information handy the most reliable name in house cleaning today's episode is also sponsored by rothy's Have you heard about this company making stylish, sustainable shoes and bags made for life on the go? They're carefully crafted with eco-friendly materials like repurposed plastic water bottles and marine plastic. Rothy's shoes are incredibly comfortable with zero break-in period thanks to their seamlessly knit design. With many chic styles to choose from, Rothy's shoes are the perfect pair for any adventure. Now, I've had the opportunity to be wearing one of their shoes for the past two months, two and a half months now. I've had them since the beginning of the year and they are truly very comfortable and I didn't have to break them in. They are um, a neutral hue. They're a khaki color, pointed toe flat. Um, and I, they're the Merino pointed toe flat. And I have worn them at least two times every single week to work or out to do my errands. They look well with casual clothes as well as dresses or skirts that I wear. And they are just really comfortable. My feet don't ache at the end of the day when I take them off. They are simply a hug. So I honestly do recommend Rothy's and the sustainability factor, it makes me love them even more. Rothy's come in an ever-changing array of colors, prints, and patterns, and they're available in a range of styles. Plus, Rothy's always come with free shipping and free returns. And this is the awesome bonus. Rothy's are fully machine washable. Yep, they can be cleaned right in your own home. Every time they need a refresh, you can simply toss them in the washing machine. Keeping it clean just got a whole lot easier. So as a simple, sophisticated listener, be sure to check out all their amazing shoes and bags available right now at rothys.com slash simple. That's rothys.com, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash simple comfort, style, and sustainability. Meet to create your new favorites. Head to rothys.com slash simple today. Today's episode is also sponsored by Native. Did you know that many conventional deodorants contain aluminum, which forms a plug in your sweat glands to keep you from sweating? Native's deodorant is made without aluminum, so you can feel better about what you're putting on your body. Making the switch to an aluminum-free deodorant does not mean you have to sacrifice on performance. Native will keep you smelling and feeling fresh all day long. And with over 10 scents, including their classics and rotating seasonals, you're guaranteed to find one you love. Their classic scents include coconut and vanilla, their most popular, lavender and rose, the one I love and use, cucumber, mint, and eucalyptus and mint. Now, Native comes in a wide variety of options for men, women, and even teens. They also offer an unscented option and a baking soda-free formula for those with sensitivities. Still not convinced? Check out their 9,000 five-star reviews from happy customers who made the switch to Native. As well, Native is excited for the relaunch of their toothpaste line. Most natural toothpastes feel like natural toothpaste during brushing, gritty, little to no foaming, 
limited freshening powder, and without the clean mouth feeling you expect after brushing your teeth. But Native's toothpaste uses a special blend of naturally derived cleansers, flavors, and whiteners to deliver a great brushing experience without the trade-offs of other natural toothpaste. With two minty flavors, the option of fluoride or fluoride-free that will keep your mouth squeaky clean, whitening wild mint and peppermint oil, and detoxifying charcoal with mint. Native's natural toothpaste can do it all. It whitens your teeth, freshens your breath, is enamel safe, and prevents cavities. Now, having used Native's deodorant, I can attest that not only does it work, but it smells nice as well, naturally so, and it leaves me with a nice peace of mind. Now, as a simple, sophisticated listener, you have the opportunity to take 20% off your first order when you visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code SOPHISTICATE during checkout. Visit nativedeodorant.com, use promo code SOPHISTICATE, and save 20% off your first purchase. So why not go Native? Welcome back. Now I'd like to share with you the final six ideas for daily and weekly rituals that you can incorporate into your daily routine. Number seven is to create an evening ritual for winding down before you go to bed. Something that I look forward to every day, weekday or weekend, is my evening routine. After the work on the blog has been completed, after I've been, you know, out and about, if I was, you know, having fun on the weekend, whatever it might be, after dinner has been savored, um, it is this hour or two before I drift off to sleep that is priceless. My dogs as well have become accustomed to our routine. And even though they don't have, or, you know, they don't know the time of day that we humans live by, they know when bedtime is near. And so it's a winding down for them too. From calming down the house with the dishes being washed, kitchen cleaned, work put away, to lighting a candle in the living room, turning on a pre-taped show, um, or picking up a book or magazine that I want to slip away into for a while. These simple activities tell my mind that it's safe to rest, to relax, to be done for the day. All the while, I'm sipping some tea and nibbling on a piece of chocolate truffle, the ultimate signal to my body and brain that the day is done. So that's number seven, creating an evening ritual for winding down before going to bed. Number eight is less of a ritual, but more of just an awareness, and it's to be conscientious about your daily news intake. Now, going along with number five, um, with regards to the listening routine that we want to have in our daily routine, what media we choose to let be a part of our daily routines has a profound effect on our mental health. I shared and encouraged my students to limit their news intake as it can easily overwhelm us, especially during this particular time in our lives. I did not suggest that they completely put their head in the sound and ignore the news, but rather to encourage them to choose one or two times a day in which they check with credible news sources, but then, you know, put an end to it and go about their day. And I think all of us can benefit from that. I'm hearing that from all sorts of sources that I look at um, for mental health and even news sources. NPR even said, you know, reduce or at least be really thoughtful about how much news you take in. And this is a news source saying that. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe we should all, you know, heed this. Now, they're not saying stop reading the news, not stop, you know, being informed. We should absolutely be informed in these times more than ever, but we don't want to become overwhelmed. That's not healthy either. So that's number eight, be conscientious about your daily news intake. Number nine, create a workspace that you love to work in. So cultivating a welcoming workspace, whether it is temporary or where you work on a normal every day because you work from home is powerful to our our state of mind and our ability to complete the tasks we want to finish, but also to do them well. So that we're very proud of how they've turned out. Now, I have written a post a couple years ago about how to make your office space efficient and inspiring. Actually, I think I wrote it in 2019, uh, back in February 2019. And I've provided a link to that on the show notes. Just some simple ideas just to briefly give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. Welcome, you know, welcome natural light. Open the windows, open the blinds, um, reduce unhelpful distractions. Um, so if you need to turn off the pings and pops and, and alerts, um, do that. Um, and decorate or rearrange in such a way that you're beckoned to not only come in and work, but to work well and to lose track of time and just get things done. So that's number nine. Create a workspace that you want to work in. 
Number 10, befriend water. Choose to bring and drink water with you throughout the day. Staying hydrated has oodles of benefits, but on the immunity side of things, it will help rid your body of toxins. And this is something we need to do throughout the day, not just at night when our body's really working hard to get rid of those toxins. Even if I'm enjoying my regular cup of tea in the morning, as you'll see in a picture I included on the show notes, I also... And this is when I'm having tea in the morning, evening, or afternoon, I regularly will have a glass of water as well with me, or I will have my hydro flask, which is full of water, which is something that I would take to work. But also I always have it with me in my car um, when I'm going walking or whatnot, so that when I come back to my car after I walk, I can really just down a bunch of water. This is a habit that will satiate your appetite, it will refresh your body, and it will elevate many areas of your life that we often will take for granted, but it will certainly be a benefit. So that's number 10 befriend water. Number 11, turn your ideas into gold. Yes, William Shakespeare may have written King Lear during his quarantine tenure in the 16th century. And while we may not produce such masterpieces as Mr. Shakespeare, we can use this time to let our creative ideas run free so that we have time to see what they want to reveal. Keep a notebook or a small journal handy and write down what pops into your mind. You may be able to tend to that idea now or it may just be an idea that you can implement later. But either way, it will be a positive exercise to focus on positive, hopeful, inspiring things. Our mind is a muscle and it finds the tracks we repeat again and again. So practice thinking in such a way that lifts you up, gets you excited, and who knows where your creative thoughts will take you. As for me, I am planning the Simply Luxurious Life's upcoming British week, which is the third full week in May, and pulling together April 1st's The Simply Luxurious Life's Spring Shopping Guide and whatever else wishes to reveal itself to me, which makes me just excited to think about who knows what I'll discover with all this free time on my hands. I, I, I'm actually elated about it. And I'm trying to focus on that while also being diligent about what I have to do to, to protect my health for myself, my family, and my community, and overall this world. We're all in this together. So find some fun in it. Find an opportunity to create in ways you may have never thought of possible before. So that's number 11. Turn your ideas into gold. And last but not least Number 12, incorporate regular self-care and model it for others in your life. That hot bath that you, you used to take infrequently but love and look forward to deeply, take it regularly, every week, every other day, but make it a ritual you look forward to as well as savor when you slip into the hot bubble bath of comfort. Last year, I shared 31 ways to practice self-care in episode 242. And as I shared in this episode, while the bubble baths and other pleasures are certainly part of this regular self-care routine, self-care needs to go even deeper. When self-care goes deeper, it has even more powerful and long-lasting positive effects on our life. Be sure to check out the show notes of this particular episode, number 242, for much more information on this topic. So number 12 is incorporate regular self-care and model it for others in your life. Now, the current situation in which we find ourselves is unprecedented in our times, but it has the potential to reveal a tremendous amount about our strengths, our compassion, and our ability to rise in ways we may not have known we were capable. I am confident that while the unknown has the potential to paralyze, it can also teach us an abundance about ourselves, those around us, the world, and then reveal to us what we should truly be focused on for a better world moving forward. For this entire list, for the links that I talked about in today's episode, visit the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 280. And if you're looking for a few more posts and episodes on this topic, um, I've shared a bunch of those links um, on the show notes as well. So why not establish weekend rituals, the, da- the benefit of daily rituals, as well as 34 inspiring daily rituals to ignite your creativity. They're all in the show notes. Um, to check out. So be sure to visit the blog. And now it's time for this week's Petit Plaisir. I'll be right back to share with you this unique one that I think, I think you're going to love. I think you're going to like it. (laughs) I'll be right back. This week's Petit Plaisir is something that, um, I was inspired to do after watching a video of Tan France's 
home tour. And Tan France, as you know, is is from Netflix's Queer Eye. And he was giving a tour of his home for Architectural Digest a couple months ago. And, you know, I love the tour. But then he shared with the viewers something that I had never thought about doing. And it seems so simple. And it is definitely a bit of a luxury, but it doesn't have to be all that extravagant. And what it was, was to have a candle cupboard or candle closet, as he called it. Now, I love this idea. Uh, my current candle cupboard, I call mine a candle cupboard because, well, it's a cupboard and I'm not going to have a huge closet. I just will never fill that up. Um, but I have started to do this. Now, I only have two candles right now in my candle cupboard. And there's a picture of my candle cupboard on today's show notes. But I love this idea because I love having candles in my home. And when they go on sale, when my favorite ones go on sale, as they did recently, I was up in Portland in December, December, January, and I was at Rejuvenation. And some of their candles were 50% off and they're top quality candles. I said, what? I was going to buy one. And so I decided to buy two because my budget allowed. And so I said, okay. So only when I'm able to afford it and only when it's ones that I love um, and often when they go on sale. Um, But, you know, the beautiful thing about candles is they can last a very long time. Um, They're not uh, like food or perishables. So this is something that it will take time to build, but I think, um, you know, as you start to find the candle that you really love, the scents you really enjoy in your home, um, this is a great little simple luxury to add to your everyday life and um, have fun doing it. I've included uh, the post that I wrote last year where I share my seven favorite French candle brands that I love. There are many more out there, I know, but these are seven that I've had and enjoyed in my own home and I can um, wholeheartedly recommend. So I've included that link to that post on today's show notes if you're curious. Um, So yeah, this week's Petit Plaisir is to begin to cultivate a candle cupboard or closet. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, before I sign off on today's episode, I just want to let you know that per the schedule of the show, I'm taking the next two weeks off. I will be back on the 6th of April, Monday the 6th, with an episode. But what I'm doing, and I had planned on doing this um, for since September, I take this time and I'm prepping the uh, annual spring shopping guide. I'm also taking this time to plan projects that will come up in May. As I mentioned, British week is coming up. Um, But you will always have a Monday motivational post on the blog every single Monday. So next Monday, I may not be in your ears, but you can definitely stop by the blog and read a new, brand new Monday motivational post. And of course, you can stop by the blog every day of the work week, Monday through Friday for a brand new post to inspire you, to give you ideas on how to elevate the everyday. I'm here for you. I am on Instagram. On Sunday, I was on Instagram sharing different perspectives from readers from around the world and how their countries and their families are living with the current situation that we are in to give us all some perspective. Um, And I will continue to share positive, uplifting, comforting, but also reliable sources of information for you to make it easier as we go through this process. We're all in this together. And I think our community here on the Simply Luxurious Life and the Simple Sophisticate um, podcast is a wonderful community to draw strength and comfort from. And with that said, if you think that this episode will be helpful to someone that you know, please share this episode with them and um, just remind them that they are not alone. We, like I said, are in this together. So with that, have a good week and thank you so much for choosing to listen to the Simple Sophisticate podcast. All my best. Bon journée.
thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, a modern woman's guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.